Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, Sahrawi Rights Group condemns Moroccan human rights violations in Western Sahara. Anti-coup protests continue across Myanmar as Aung San Suu Kyi faces additional charges. Biden administration revokes Houthi's designation as a terrorist organization in Yemen. In our first story, the collective of Sahrawi human rights defenders of Kodesa has called for global support as Morocco resumes its oppressive campaign in the Western Sahara region. Kodesa has appealed to the Red Cross to establish a permanent mission for humanitarian operations in the region. The organization also led a signature campaign from January 20th to February 15th, urging other international organizations to support its petition. The group has pointed to the rise in crimes against humanity and systematic repression of the Sahrawi people who are fighting for self-determination in the Western Sahara region. The region, which was once a Spanish colony, has been occupied by Morocco since 1975. The Polisario Front has been leading a fight against the Moroccan occupation and colonial intervention in Western Sahara. It has also established self-rule in parts of the territory known as the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic or the SADR. Morocco has also refused to comply with the 1991 ceasefire agreement negotiated by the UN. Morocco signed the US-mediated Abraham Accords normalizing relations with Israel in December 2020. In exchange, the US has recognized the Moroccan sovereignty over the Western Sahara region. The Moroccan military has now started breaching the border with the SADR established in the 1991 agreement. Human rights and pro-independence activists from the demilitarized Gergarat zone were arrested by Moroccan forces in November last year. The SADR also addressed a letter to the UN Secretary General and the Security Council stating that it is a legitimate right of the Sahrawi people to firmly respond to actions which jeopardize the safety of their life. In our second story, thousands gathered in the city of Yangon on February 17th as anti-coup protests continued across Myanmar. The military junta has claimed that it is willing to hold a new election and hand over power to the winning party. The announcement was made on February 16th, the same day as police imposed an additional charge against deposed state councillor Aung San Suu Kyi. Aung San Suu Kyi was previously remanded to police custody on February 3rd on charges related to the violation of import-export laws and the possession of an illegal walkie-talkie device. She was to be held in custody till February 17th. She has now been charged with violating natural disaster management laws and has also been accused of violating COVID-19 regulations during an election campaign. This was the same charge that was imposed on the ousted president as well. The date for the next hearings for Suki and the president have been set for March 1st. The military junta has escalated efforts to suppress the ongoing civil disobedience movement. The military has imposed around five internet shutdowns since the coup began earlier this month. Social media platforms, including Facebook and WhatsApp, were blocked. Security forces increasingly have increasingly used water cannons, rubber bullets and tear gas against protesters. Armed military tanks were also deployed to various civil servant cities, including Yangon, over the weekend. Martial law and curfews have been imposed across several townships. The Assistance Association for Political Prisoners has estimated that over 50 arrests have been made so far. The protests in Myanmar have seen large mobilizations across sectors and communities. Teachers, labor unions, healthcare workers and government employees have led daily straight protests over the past two weeks. As citizens continue to demand the restoration of civilian government, Rights organizations have also pointed to the complicity of Suki's government in the military-led violence against the Rohingyas. We now move to Yemen, where the United States has revoked its designation of Yemen's Houthis as foreign terrorist organization. The Biden administration additionally also revoked the specially designated global terrorist classification as the decision came into effect on February 16th. The designations have been put in place by former Trump administration secretary Mike Pompeo. The decision then had, ra- had raised widespread concerns regarding its impact on crucial humanitarian assistance to Yemen. The current U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, has announced that the three Houthi leaders will still remain subject to U.S. sanctions related to acts that threaten the peace, security and stability of Yemen, according to him. The leaders in question are Abdul Malik al-Houthi, Abdul Khaliq Badr al-Houthi and Abdul Yahya al-Hakim. The Biden administration has also urged the Houthis to cease all military operations. The U.S. is now pushing for negotiations between the conflicting sides in Yemen. President Biden has also ended U.S. support for the Saudi-led military offensive against the Houthis. The delisting of Houthis as a terrorist organization has also been welcomed by aid agencies. The designation would have restricted crucial imports and assistance to Yemen in the midst of its severe humanitarian crisis. The estimated casualties of the Saudi-led war and accompanying blockade lie anywhere between 100,000 and 250,000. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.